Hola mi amigos, I am Marco Mac and this is the All Elite Wrestling News for AEW fans. Today we're going to be talking about the ratings, this week's ratings of how AEW performed against themselves and against the old NXT. So it'll be interesting to see how we did in the ratings war, the Wednesday night war this week. We're also going to be talking about Jeff Cobb. So what's the story of Jeff Cobb? Has he or has he not signed a new contract for All Elite Wrestling? Is he still a free agent? Hmm. And I'm going to be talking about an injury that Cody Rhodes has potentially done to himself when he did that massive moonsault off the top of the steel cage against Wardlow on Dynamite this week. And finally, probably my favourite story, is we've just released the new action figures for All Elite Wrestling and I really, really love my action figures. High-end ones, I think they're fantastic. So I'm looking forward to going through some of the new action figures we've got. Hangman's in there, Cody's in there, and there's also some special editions. All that and no more on All Elite Wrestling Fans News. Let's get to it. And now, to our first story. It's that favourite time of the week for everyone. It's the ratings war news between All Elite Wrestling and NXT. This week, the numbers are up on last week's episode. We did 893,000 viewers, which is a good showing, up from the 817 viewers from the week before. I'd like to see the individual segment breakdowns to see which segments brought the most fans in. I'm guessing the cage match was the one that got most people to tune in and watch because it was epic and everyone was talking about it and it was our first ever cage match so that must have done some good numbers for that segment. Uh, it was not point three one rating in the 18 to 49 demographic so still holding strong, still doing really well in that demographic. I can't see them losing it. NXT do very well in the over 50s but WWE do have a longer and an older fan base so they've kind of been there from the start whereas AEW they're attracting some older fans they're attracting some people that have fallen away the lapsed fan plus we've got a whole new um, second and third generations that are coming through into wrestling so all of this all of this helps keeps the fan base going keeps keeping to help it to grow and to get more eyes on the product yeah, NXT I mean these numbers are not to be scoffed at at all when you look at this, NXT did 794,000, so you're looking at a difference of 99,000 viewers. That's a really strong number. You'd expect between the two companies by now that AEW would be pulling away a little bit and maybe having more in the ratings. But again, time time will tell. It's got to grow organically. You're looking at 903,000 as their average viewers for um, AEW every Wednesday night. I've said before, the DVR numbers are a lot higher for NXT and AEW. Apparently, they're even higher than the DVR numbers for SmackDown and Raw. It's all relative. It's not an exact science, to be perfectly honest. They're not counting every single person that's watching. There's a lot of manual intervention that goes into these numbers. They're not perfect, but it's a good indicator of how a product is performing, and it's a pretty good metric, and it's a metric which, which tends to get better every week for AEW or at least every month monthly averages are improving we can only hope that it continues and that more people tune in to NXT let's see how we do next week as it's the go home show for Revolution are the numbers going to increase are there going to be more eyes on the product time will tell I'm actually really excited about it if you'd see what the numbers do this week I'd like to see them hit a million no guarantees but that is the ratings news because we love a good rating. Now for the second story, which centres around our new AEW debut, I guess we could say, is Jeff Cobb. He made his in-ring debut against John Moxley this week on Dynamite, debuting, of course, alongside uh, Wardlow, who had a very good showing against Cody Rhodes. But Jeff Cobb looked very, very impressive in that match. He didn't look weak in defeat at all, because he over sort of arched himself on the superplex which allowed John Moxley to roll him up for the pin but he seemed to dominate the entire match really he'd, I'd say he dominated the majority of the match which was a very good showing for Jeff Cobb now that makes you think 
Hmm. If they're booking him this strong, they clearly want to hold on to him, and that's correct. It has been rumoured that he's been offered a contract with All Elite Wrestling. Has he accepted it? From what we know so far, he hasn't accepted the contract. I think he'd be crazy not to take it, but he still wants to work in New Japan. He still wants to work in Ring of Honor and doing some dates for those companies. So I guess it's completely up to Jeff Cobb what he decides to do. I would like to see him doing more in All Elite Wrestling. I'd like to see him do a bit like what Nyla Rose is doing at the minute. She's steamrolling through all the women, getting some win wings, wings, getting some wins under her belt, under her wings, her bees wings, eh, that she said about the bees this week. If Jeff Cobb can do the same, get a few wins, build some momentum, I can really see him being a dominant force, not just within All Elite Wrestling, but within the inner circle as well. He's like Chris Jericho's hitman at the moment. He's his hired gun, which kind of makes you think, what's Big Hurt? What's his role? He's got to fight Dustin at Revolution. That's only in a few days. But yeah, Jeff Cobb, has he signed? Has he not signed? It looks like he hasn't. He could get a deal where he has some flexibility to work with Ring of Honor and with New Japan. The sort of deals that Jericho and John Moxley have could have a similar thing set up. We don't know. Time will tell. And let's just see if any more breaking news happens over the next few days between now and Revolution. If anything happens at Revolution that makes Jeff Cobb look like an absolute beast, that could be a telltale sign that perhaps he has inked some sort of contract. We'll just have to wait until Revolution now, won't we? And that is this Sunday. So we've not got long to wait at all. And now, in some rather unfortunate news... All Elite Wrestling has reported that Cody Rhodes is currently injured. Now the injury isn't said to be serious and he has been cleared to wrestle but apparently he has fractured, he's got a small fracture in one of his toes, in his big toe and it happened after he did the moonsault off the top of the cage on Dynamite this week and landed on Wardlow. It looked like, it didn't look like Wardlow caught a lot of Cody from that moonsault but again he climbs to the top and he's thinking to himself, if I have to stop and look around here, you can't change your mind, right? You're on national TV, so just get up and just jump. Don't think about it. Get up, get to the top, and just go. And what Wardlow was there to help, but he could have been a little bit closer to help grab Cody. But again, these things, they're high-risk manoeuvres. They're called high-risk for a reason. So he's took the chance. It looked amazing. It will be one of these clips that is played forever in any video packages Anytime you want to go back and look at the hits of AEW Dynamite, that's going to be there. That's going to be one of the top clips that's there, along with the lashings as well. But that moment, going to the top of the cage, crazy. He's got himself a little injury. He's healing up. I think from what we hear, he, he is on the mend. He put a picture out on his Instagram. He commented on Twitter as well, but he put a picture out on his Instagram of the exact point of when he believed that he did injure himself when he came off that moonsault. Um, but yeah, AEW said that he's been cleared for action. He's currently on a treatment plan. And this hopefully doesn't factor in, unless it's kayfabe style, the match on Sunday, on Saturday even, this Saturday at Revolution. Could it play into that? Are we going to see MGF stomping on Cody's toes? <laughs> I, b I believe we would, because he's such a little bastard, MGF. I don't forget that he kicked me in the leg. And I hope on Sunday, Cody Rhodes absolutely busts you up. You're welcome. So this brings us to the final story in today's edition of All Elite Wrestling Fans News. And that's to do with the action figures. I'm a big fan of action figures. Always have been, ever since I was just a little itty bitty Marco Mac. And I've got some really cool ones. I've got a signed Sting from TNA. I have a signed Jake the Snake, which is one of my pride and joys. I got to talk to Jake the Snake on the Chris Jericho cruise. It was about ice cream, but nonetheless, it was still a conversation with Jake the Snake. And my pride and joy are probably my Undertaker figures. More so is my signed Undertaker figure, the very first one, the Hasbro one that ever came out. So when it comes to wrestling figures, I'm a pretty big fan of that sort of stuff. And the new ones from AEW, now I think they're coming out in August, July, August is when they're due to be released. And they look fucking amazing, I have to say. They look absolutely top-notch, outstanding. I know I say outstanding a lot, but they, but they do. They look absolutely shit-hot. 
Cody Rhodes is very detailed. He's got two. He's got the sledgehammer from being the throne breaker. And he's also got the the Captain Kirk from the... Not Captain Kirk. He's got the Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm a big Star Trek guy, so I really want to try and get the Cody Rhodes in the Star Trek Next Generation uniform, which was sort of a play on that. That's really, really sweet. Um, I think that's that's one of I think that's one of five hundred. That's going to be very limited. Speaking of the limited edition ones, I think they're called the Chase series. You've got Chris Jericho, and I thought the Chris Jericho Chase series was where he had the hat and he had the jacket and the scarf, but it's not. Apparently, according to Chris Jericho, the Chase series is the one where he's got the AEW Championship and the Inner Circle T-shirt, which seems to have a little bit less in the pack than the. One with a hat and the jacket, but nonetheless, they look they look absolutely shit hot. They really, really, really are fantastic. They're very well detailed. You've got the Lucha Brothers as well. The Lucha Brothers they are in series two, so you've got Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Junior. The detail they've got the old Cerro Miedo on there. It looks the the the, the facial expressions are just on point. With uh, Pentagon Junior, he's got an an alternative head, I believe, and you've got. Hangman Adam Page. Hangman has the vest and he's got the noose and he's got the mask that goes along his face. Accessories. Accessories are the business. You want the accessories. The Kenny Omega from the Series 1. He's got the jacket. The Young Bucks, they've got the... I believe it's a double or nothing. They've got the, the jackets from when they come out dressed as Elvis. That's pretty cool. Brandy Rhodes. Brandy Rhodes is in there for Series 1. So you've got Cody, Brandy... Young Bucks uh, and Jericho. That's series one. And then series two, you've got Dustin Rhodes, where he's sort of red, half and half face. That's pretty sweet. And you've got Hangman Adam Page. You've got uh, Ray Phoenix, Pentagon Jr. And you've got one other one. Oh, M- how can I forget MGF? MGF. MGF. And he's got the Burberry scarf. The- I think the detail on these is just brilliant. I think they've really captured some of their unique expressions that the guys have from All Elite Wrestling. You've got two rings as well. You've got a standard ring, and you've got a deluxe ring. And the deluxe ring is meant to be more to scale for the action figures. And in the in that ring, you also get a special edition Kenny Omega figure. He's he's got different clothes on. Different. He's not got like the pointy hand. He's just got like normal normal hands. If you've not pre-ordered these, you're out of your mind. I don't know how it's going to work in the UK, but I'm definitely going to pre-order these. They look, they look brilliant. They're just the detail is is spot on. Make sure you pre-order these because they are going to sell out, especially the ones that are limited edition, and that's the Chris Jericho, which is one of one thousand, and the Cody Rhodes, which is one of five hundred. Okay, I'm Marco Mac. This has been another edition of All Elite Wrestling Fans News. I hope you tune in for further episodes. And the next video that should be going up is the review of All Elite Dynamite from last week. It's either going to be me and Jordan or it might be me on my Todd. Because Jordan has a show tonight. He's got a house show in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And he's got a Raw. I think Raw is in Winnipeg tomorrow. And Jordan is off to see Raw. Jordan, you're an absolute traitor. Thanks everyone for watching AEW fans and please, please make sure you like and subscribe because if you don't Michael here, he's not going to be happy.